This is John chapter 3, and we're going to talk about religious cults versus biblical Christianity. John 3, 1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The Pharisees were very religious people who cared more about the outward things than the inward things. Nicodemus was a religious man who seemed to be a little more open to the truth than other Pharisees. And we see some of his religious traits in this story. And we will talk about dead religion versus Bible-believing Christianity. Number one, religion has rulers or dictators, while Bible-believing Christianity has pastors and teachers. In verse 1, it says, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. He would have great influence over a lot of lost people if he would get right with God. And rulers or cult leaders in religion have great power over their students or disciples. Many times they have a personality that will stick out and draw in many people. If someone goes against them, then they will excommunicate that person and make them look like a fool to their friends and family and the other people in that fellowship. And there is no room for disagreement with them. They believe they have it all figured out and if you and you have to go by their tradition. And this is what the Pharisees were all about, the traditions of men. In Mark 7, 8, it says, For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. Uh, they don't care about the book. They care about tradition. And many times a Baptist pastor, even a Baptist pastor, will be a dictator over the people. And this is something God hates. In Revelation 2.15 it says, So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And this is talking about clergy over the laity. That's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Meaning the pastor or priest or leader is superior to the student, and only he can understand the words of God. So therefore the student has to go to him to get what God said. And God gave men to edify the body of Christ not to be dictators and act like Nicolaitans. Ephesians 4.11 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. A good pastor and teacher will teach the student how to learn the Bible on his own. That way he doesn't have to come to him for every question. Someone who reads the Bible will not be exactly like their teacher. You can tell when someone is reading the book and when someone is just copying their teacher or pastor. The Bible produces individuals. He didn't want us to all be the same because that would be boring and God doesn't do stuff that way. A pastor and teacher can help you a great deal. But once you learn how to study the Bible, you should still listen to your teacher. But also learn the Bible on your own time as well. A good teacher will have grace and leave room for you to disagree on the minor things. He will also not get mad if you question something he teaches. Uh, rulers of dead religion are a lot different than rulers in the body of Christ. God puts authority figures in everything. He gives certain people wisdom to lead others in the right direction. You should follow a godly pastor or teacher. But this isn't a blind following like followers of religious cults. Uh, Hebrews thirteen seventeen says, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. A good leader is watching out for you. He isn't watching out for his reputation and his authority. Uh, John 3, 2 says, The same came to Jesus by night, referring to Nicodemus, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Notice that Nicodemus came by night. This shows he was fearful of ruining his reputation. He didn't want to be seen going to Jesus Christ to ask questions. The Pharisees hated Jesus Christ with a passion. So number two, dead religion causes fear of man, while Bible-believing Christianity causes us to fear God. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord, 
shall be saved. Many times even someone who isn't in dead religion can be scared of being associated with someone else. If another Christian is living right and trying their best to do right, we shouldn't break fellowship with that person over the past. Those who do so, they only do it because of the fear of man. Sometimes a preacher won't associate with another preacher who has been divorced and remarried. He is afraid of what his friends will think. And if a person is in the body of Christ and he is trying to live right, then we have no excuse for being mean or snobbish to that person. They are in the body of Christ and Jesus lives inside of them. How can you say you are too good to shake their hand or associate yourself with them when Jesus Christ himself is living inside that person? Don't forget you're a sinner yourself, you have your own faults, and you could be tempted with the same temptations they have if you're not careful. People in dead religion will be afraid of their cult leader. The fear of man bringeth a snare, and they will blindly follow him into a ditch when he is blind himself. In Matthew fifteen fourteen, Jesus said, Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. I'm weary of listening to any false teacher who doesn't even know if he is going to heaven. A lot of these men with eternal insecurity don't believe you have eternal security. They are so caught up in their own works. And I wouldn't want to listen to a man tell me how to get to heaven when he isn't 100% sure he is going himself. You can know where you're going when you die. 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Fear causes you to do stupid things. Sometimes a person falls in love with a man's personality and his doctrine more than Jesus Christ. And then that man becomes their God, so they fear that man. In Romans 3... It describes the Pharisees perfectly. Romans three thirteen through 18, it says, Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cur cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That describes man perfectly. No fear of God before their eyes. They fear men. A real Bible believer will, will encourage people to take the Bible as their final authority and to fear God and not to take man as the final authority. Psalms 34.11 says, Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. People need to be taught the fear of the Lord. John 3.2 says, The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a good teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. That's Nicodemus talking to Jesus. And notice that religious people are fascinated with Jesus Christ, whether they accept him as God in the flesh or not. The same is true for devil-possessed men. The devils ran and worshipped Jesus that were inhabiting the maniac of Gadara. So number three, Religion many times teaches Jesus is only a good teacher, while Bible-believing Christianity teaches that Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh. I believe Nicodemus seems to believe Jesus is who he says he is. But many cults will teach that Jesus Christ is only a good prophet or a good man. They don't believe he rose from the dead, and that would be a satanic cult teaching. Nicodemus seems to be open to the truth and is leaning towards Jesus Christ being possibly who he says he is. And Bible believers believe that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. The new Bibles like to attack this great truth, but we believe what the King James Bible says. We don't believe Joseph was Jesus Christ's father. 
we believe God was his father. We believe Jesus Christ found it not robbery to be equal with God. We believe he claimed to be the son of God, which would make him equal with God. And watch out for any false teacher who claims that Jesus Christ is not God. If someone claims that, I automatically turn them off. I don't fellowship with them. I don't talk to them about uh, the Bible at all because they have no idea what they're talking about. They are a heretic, a false prophet, a false teacher, uh, led by the devil, whatever you want to call it. When you call Jesus Christ, when you claim he's not God in the flesh, you are a liar and you're led by the devil. And John 3, 3 through 8 says this, Jesus answered and said unto him, talking to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Notice that the Spirit birth is invisible. You can't see it. And this proves water baptism has nothing to do with the spiritual birth. You can see water baptism. Notice the verse said, Canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. For this reason, is it, it is impossible for us to truly know if someone is saved or unsaved. We can't see inside that person. All we can see is outward evidence. And you can't judge a person's salvation off of outward evidence. A lost person can be a good moral person who lives right and not be saved. And a Christian can go back and live like he did before he was saved if he walks in the flesh. Many times the only thing we have to determine whether a person is saved or not is their testimony. And John 3, 9 says, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Notice that Nicodemus doesn't understand the new birth. He said, How can these things be? He doesn't understand the idea of being born again. So number four, dead religious people don't understand the Bible. They don't understand being born again. While a born again Bible believer understands the book. You may not understand everything in the Bible, you have to study, but you understand what being born again is. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the natural man, the lost man, or even a, a Christian that is walking in the flesh and never studying the Bible, He's not going to understand the Bible like a Christian, a born-again Christian who reads the Bible every day. A born-again Christian who picks up the book and reads it, you're going to learn what born-again means. I mean, when you got saved, you may, you may not have heard the phrase born-again, but someone told you the death, burial, and resurrection. You knew what it took to be saved. You knew Jesus died for your sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And you put your faith in that. You knew what it took to be saved. Then you learn things like what born again means. You learn that you got born again. You learn that the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you at salvation. You learn what imputed righteousness was and justification and imputation. And all those words that sound like big words, but they're really not that hard to understand. Once you get the Bible and read it. And the reason people have so much doubts about their salvation is because they don't read the Bible. They don't know what happened to them at salvation. They don't know how it's impossible for them to lose it, so they end up doubting it. But dead religious people don't understand the Bible. A born-again believer understands the Bible. Someone in dead religion trying to get to heaven by their works doesn't understand why they need to be born again. When you get born again, God cuts your soul loose from your flesh. When he does this, your sins in the flesh are no longer applied to your soul. Your soul is spotless as the Lord Jesus Christ after you get saved. Therefore, there is no need to go around doing good works to make it to heaven. We are supposed to do good works. And any Christian who isn't trying to live, live right and abstain from sin and trying to please God, he is a low-down Christian. 
who needs to get right with God. But we aren't doing these things to make it to heaven. We do these things because we love God and because we want to do what the Bible says. A lost person who picks up the Bible isn't going to understand it. It will be a waste of time trying to teach a lost person the Bible. They will get a hold of a verse and start a cult by a verse taken out of context. Charles Manson read the Bible and got some crazy thing out of it. You saw what happened to him. A intelligent lost person reading the Bible is dangerous. But Nicodemus doesn't understand the concept of being born again. The Church of Christ cult doesn't understand these verses themselves. They are in dead religion trying to get to heaven by their works. When Jesus says you have to be born of water... He is not talking about water baptism. He is talking about the first birth, the water birth. Your mother's water broke, and we are all born of water, but we all, we all don't get born again. You know he is talking about the first birth when your mother birthed you, because he says in John 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When you came out of your mother, you were born of the flesh. When you got born again, this was the spiritual birth. So if you want to stay in your dead religion and claim he is referring to water baptism, then you took the verse out of context and you also added the word baptism. The verse doesn't even mention baptism. John 3, 4 says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Unlike the Church of Christ cult, Nicodemus understood the first birth first birth was a physical birth where you are born into this world and this is why he says can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born this reveals something else about nicodemus and religious people they focus on the physical things and the things which others can see they just focus on the things you can see outwardly they don't consider the spiritual things and I have a lot of Church of Christ family members. They focus on works that they do outwardly. Notice that religious people focus on what is seen of men. In Matthew 6, 5 it says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Matthew 23, 5 says, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They fear men. They do their works to be seen of men and their cult leader and other fellow cult followers. They fear these men and they do good works to be seen of these men. The average person who is trying to justify their self by their own righteousness has a very, very low moral standard. They see sin as only adultery, stealing, killing, shacking up, doing drugs, and all of these outward things that can be seen of men. The average person can go through life without doing these things. How hard is it to go without killing somebody? How hard is it to go without committing adultery? A lost person could go through life without committing these sins. I mean, how hard is it to not commit adultery, physical adultery? They... Uh, Moral standard of people who believe you can lose your salvation is very, very low. They don't take into consideration gossiping and complaining. They don't take them things into consideration as a sin because if they did, then they would lose their salvation every single day. Most Bible believers who believe in eternal security have a much higher standard when it comes to sin. We see the thought of foolishness as a sin. We see envy and pride as a sin. And all of these things on the inside that are ungodly are also sin. And if you could lose your salvation, those things would cause you to lose it. But you can't. We also recognize that we have a lot of spiritual blessings. And a lot of things took place inside of us when we got saved. We got the spiritual circumcision. We got the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ applied to us. All of these things that keep us saved and not our works. 
the religious person doesn't recognize this because he is trying to get to heaven by his own righteousness. And Romans 10.3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And the religious person doesn't understand the idea that Jesus Christ died for our sins because we couldn't do anything to pay for those sins ourselves. Galatians 2.21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And Nicodemus was so focused on the things on things he could see that he thought a man would have to enter into his mother's womb a second time to be born again. He does not understand the scriptures. Being born again changes the inner man, while being religious only changes the outward man. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. A lost person can act like a safe person. He can abstain from sinning and claim to be a Christian. A Christian can refuse to yield to the Holy Ghost and act like a lost person. I mean, a lost person can't completely abstain from sin, but he can abstain from those sins that people see as sin. I mean, there's lost people that don't commit adultery and murder and shack up. There's lost people that live good moral lives, and they can pretend to be saved and look saved to other people. While a Christian can look like he's a lost person and people think he's not saved. But moving on, John 3.10 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Jesus Christ was always humiliating and making a fool of the religious hypocrites. Many times he would ask them, Have ye not read? Have ye not read? He showed his superiority over them in everything, including the scriptures. Religious cult leaders and followers believe they know everything and that they have it all figured out. They claim to be masters. Uh, which brings us to our next point. Dead religious men claim to be masters while a Bible believer knows there are things past finding out. Job 9.10 says, Which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Romans 11.33 says, O oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. If you have spent enough time in the Bible, then you realize you don't know very much. Even the books of the Bible I study over and over and over, I feel like I can't ever master it. The religious dictators claim to be masters, and this leads them to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, as we talked about earlier. A Bible believer needs to continue in study and constant reading. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. There is enough in this book to study until you die. But I hope this has helped you in John chapter 3.